Our video today is on ordering and comparing real numbers. So the ordering part is going to be asking you to graph it on a number line. The comparing is going to be using less than or greater than. The real numbers, if you need to go back in and look, we have that flip chart that we created uh, to help us organize that stuff. Uh, what they're going to do in this part is they're going to be given numbers to correctly show points on a number line uh, for the graphing part or the ordering. So they're going to give you a variety of different numbers that you're going to see in this section. So the numbers that they could give you are the symbol pi, which is what they'll give you, which is 3.14, or they can give you negative pi, which is just negative 3.14. Uh, they can give you a square root of 5 or a negative square root of 10. So this comes out of the approximate root section that we talked about where you're going to have to find the approximate value of where it may fall in between. Um, the other ones that they can give you is 7.9 or 9.4. These could also be negative as well. And then 10 or negative 6. So they can give you decimals. They can give you a pi, which is um, our irrational number. We can get another irrational number here with the square root of 5 and square root of 10. And we're just going to put those on a number line as where they fall. Uh, so the example that they would give you is identify the graph that shows the correct plot of points. So they're going to either give you a number line or you may just want to draw one out and get that done. Uh, so the numbers that they're going to give you are, in this example, are negative pi, 8, negative 9, negative square root of 3. So we're looking at plotting these where they fall on the number line. So I would, it doesn't matter where you, which one you start with, uh, you can start with the first one and go to that one, that's fine. So our pi, which is negative, is our 3.14. So it's negative 3.14. So if I go on my number line, 1, 2, 3, 0.4 is just past 3, so it would be about right here. Uh, positive 8, we're going to go on the positive side, so it's going to be over here at positive 8. Negative 9, we're going to go in the opposite direction here as a negative 9 as a, as a point on our graph. And then the square root of negative 3. Again, you want to think of two numbers that it would fall in between. I can think of 1 and 2. Um, because if I square 1, I get 1. If I square 2, I get 4. So it's going to fall in between those. So it's going to be 1 point something. It's negative. So I'm going to be on the left-hand side of my 0. So 1 point, I'm going to fall in somewhere in this range. And again, the multiple choice part of this will, will be a little bit easier to see that. But that's really all you're doing in here is just putting it on a number line of where it falls with the type of number that it is. So. The ones that I would probably do first, just to get them out of the way, because they'll take you the longest or the, to get that done, is the square root or the negative square roots. Um, again, this is out of the approximate root section. Uh, the pi or negative pi, which we already should know is 3.14 or negative 3.14. And again, it's something to memorize. You'll need to know that later on. Um, and it's something that you got last year. Uh, with the correct order, this is comparing. So we're going to use the symbols that you've used before. So the one that points to the left is going to be less than. The one that points to the right is going to be greater than. Um, this will be determined by what will be given in class. So I'll either tell you go greater to less, um, less to greater uh, in that direction. So I'll give you both of them so you can kind of see how it plays out. But if you can do it one direction, you just flip it around and get the other one. So choose the correct order of the numbers, um, pi, 7, negative 8.5, and the square root of 8. So again, you have to figure out what the square root of 8 is, again, figuring out the two numbers that it goes in between. So if I were to say large to small, or greater to least, I would start out with my 7 is greater than pi. Pi, which is 3.14, is greater than the square root of 8, which is greater than negative 8.5. So again, with the square root of 8, I want to think of two numbers um, I would probably think maybe 2 and 3. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, so this is going to be two point, almost 2.9. So it's, you're looking at something that is bigger than, uh, pi is bigger than that, but it's bigger than the negative 8.5. So if we turn, turn it around and we go small to large, we're just basically flipping everything. So now we're starting with negative 8.5 is less than square root of 8. The square root of 8 is less than pi. Pi is less than 7. So our bigger number just flips position, our smaller number flips position, and everything just flips. So that shouldn't be too much, and you're just putting them in order from least to greatest again, 
as you're going. But we're using the comparison symbols to help us with that. So a couple more, if we plot it, um, 4.8, 7.4, negative 8.5, the square root of 5. So again, I'm going to plot 4.8, so I'm going to go over here. 4.8 is almost 5. 7.4 is almost in the middle. Negative 8.5, so I'm going to be on this side, so I'm going to be down here at 8.5. And, and then the square root of 5, again, what are two numbers that falls in between? And again, I would think 1 and, and 4, or 1 and 2, because 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is, well, actually 2 and 3, sorry. Um, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So it's going to be between uh, 3 point here. So my dot should actually be over here uh, past the 3. So this dot here should actually be uh, 1, 2, 3. Um, well, actually, no, I'm right, 2 point. But my dot should be more uh, closer here for this. So uh, we're in between 2 and 3 uh, nonetheless for what our number is. And that's where those that 5 would fall between 2 and 3 for that. Just depending on is it closer to 4, is it closer to 9. Um, if we ordered it, 4.8, 9, negative 9.5, square root of 5. We already figured this one out from this previous problem, so we know that where that kind of falls into. Uh, if we go greater to least, so our 9 would go first is greater than 4.8, which is greater than square root of 5, which is greater than negative 9.4. So really, if you just line these up and then just put your symbol going in the right, you got it uh, for that. Our second example would be our negative 9.4 less than square root of 5, which is less than 4.8, which is less than 9 uh, for that section. So going back to the approximate roots info that we just did will help you in this part, especially with this part of the problem here. So the last part of this section is just putting everything together. We're going to do the order of operations with exponents and roots. So we're going to give you everything that we've done, squares, order of operations, roots, cube roots, square roots, all that stuff, and we're going to put it into a big problem. So again, it's a big problem, but we want to do it in parts. So we could take this part, this part, this part, and this part, and do it kind of at the same time, one, two, three, if you want to go left to right, that's fine. So if we take 5 minus 3 plus 1, I get 3. If I cube 3, I get 27. If I take the square root of 49, I get 7. And if I take 6 divided by 2, I get 3. From here, I would have to multiply and finish up the multiplication part of this. So 6 times 3 is 18. And then I just bring everything down. And then I would just add and subtract on the way across. So 18 plus 27 is 45. 45 minus 7 is uh, 38. 38 plus 3 gives me 41. So we're just putting it into it, we're combining everything that we've done in this section into these types of problems. So a couple more to look at. So we have our problem up here again. We want to take care of the powers, the roots, and what's in parentheses. And we can do that kind of at the same time or in the same level. So whatever I don't use, I'm going to bring down. So I've done my square root of 16, I've done my 3 cubed, I've done my 2 plus 9 plus 5 in parentheses. I still got to take care of the multiplication division. Again, I can take care of this in this part here. So I get 7 minus 4 plus 243 plus 4. And then I can just, I know 7 minus 4 is 3. And then I can just add the rest of the numbers across. So again, we're just taking a long problem with a lot of different little concepts in there and then putting it into one problem that you got to take care of. But if you do this in chunks, you'll be fine. So another example, I'm going to take care of my parentheses my powers, my square roots, and my division, and get my multiplication part out of the way to get down here, and then I'm just going to go left to right for the rest of the problem. If you can do this part in your head and not show the rest of it, I'm fine with that. It's not that big of a deal. So one left for an example. Here we go. So I have the cube root of 729, 2 squared, and 9 plus 7 minus 10 in the parentheses. So again, I'm going to take care of that stuff first and bring what I got down, and then I'm going to take care of any multiplication division, and then I'm going to take care of any adding and subtracting, or we can think of it as positive negatives, and again, go left to right in that part. Uh, so for these, make sure that you show your work, be very neat with them, um, and you shouldn't have any problem with these as you go through them.